In this video, we will talk about the science of the trigonometric functions. Here we have the rectangular coordinate system and a point with the coordinates x and y that is located in quadrant 1. We also have angle theta in standard position whose terminal side passes through this point. If we draw a perpendicular down to the x-axis, then we have formed a right triangle. In this triangle, one side is x, the other one is y, and the hypotenuse is r. Now, let's review the trigonometric functions. Sine of angle theta is the opposite side y divided by hypotenuse r. Cosine of angle theta is the adjacent side x divided by hypotenuse r. And tangent of angle theta is the opposite side y divided by the adjacent side x. We also have cosecant, secant, and cotangent, and these functions are reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. In quadrant 1, both x and y are positive, and r is always positive regardless of the quadrant. So, if we use x, y, and r in these functions, then all their values will be positive. So, again, if an angle lies in quadrant 1, then all the trigonometric functions are positive. Now, let's draw an angle in quadrant 2. So, here we have a point in quadrant 2 and angle theta whose terminal side passes through this point. In this quadrant, x is negative, y is positive, and r is always positive. I will write a minus above x and a plus above y to remember that in this quadrant x is negative and y is positive. I will also have a plus above r. And now let's talk about the science of the trigonometric functions in this quadrant. Sine of angle theta is y over r, and because both of them are positive, then sine will be positive. So I will write that sine in this quadrant is positive. And if sine is positive, then the reciprocal, which is cosecant, is also positive. Now cosine of theta is x over r, and because x is negative and r is positive, negative divided by positive is negative, therefore cosine is negative. So I will write that cosine is negative and so is secant. Now tangent of angle theta is y over x and because y is positive and x is negative, positive divided by negative is negative, therefore tangent is negative. So we will write that tangent and cotangent are both negative. Now let's have an angle in quadrant 3. So here we have angle theta with the terminal side in quadrant 3 and the terminal side passes through the point x comma y. Now in quadrant 3 both x and y are negative. So let's put a minus sign over each one of them. Then sine of theta is y over r and negative divided by positive is negative. So in this quadrant sine and cosecant are negative. Now cosine of theta is x divided by r and negative divided by positive again is negative. And now tangent of theta is y divided by x and negative divided by negative is positive. So in this quadrant both tangent and cotangent are positive. And now let's draw an angle in quadrant 4. So here we have angle theta and in quadrant 4 x is positive and y is negative. I will write a plus over x and a minus over y to remind us that x is positive and y is negative. Then sine of theta is y over r and negative divided by positive is negative. So both sine and cosecant are negative. Now cosine of angle theta is x over r and positive divided by positive is positive. So in this quadrant both cosine and secant are positive. And now tangent of angle theta is y divided by x and negative divided by positive is negative. 
then we can say that in this quadrant both tangent and cotangent are negative. So here we have all four quadrants and the signs of the trigonometric functions in each of these quadrants. Now if we combine all this information together, we will get the following diagram. Here in quadrant 1 all the functions are positive, in quadrant 2 only sine and cosecant are positive, in quadrant 3 only tangent and cotangent are positive and in quadrant 4 cosine and secant are positive. There are a few ways to memorize these signs. One way is to use the sentence all students take calculus. I will write all in quadrant 1, students in quadrant 2, take in quadrant 3 and calculus in quadrant 4. All stands for all the functions in quadrant 1, S is for sine and its reciprocal in quadrant 2, T is for tangent and its reciprocal in quadrant 3, and C is for cosine and its reciprocal in quadrant 4. So again this is a way to memorize in what quadrant a trigonometric function is positive. Now let's see what would be another way to memorize when sine, cosine or tangent is positive. We know that sine of theta is y over r and because r is always positive, this function is positive when y is positive. And we know that y is positive above the x-axis which is quadrants 1 and 2. Now cosine of theta is x over r and again because this r is always positive, this function is positive when x is positive. And we know that x is positive to the right of y axis which is the quadrants 1 and 4. And now here tangent of theta is y over x and this function is positive when both y and x are positive or both are negative. And we know that both x and y are positive in quadrant 1 and both of them are negative in quadrant 3. So tangent of theta is positive when the angle lies in quadrant 1 or in quadrant 3. Now let's solve an exercise. Here we are given that cosine of angle theta is negative 3 over 5 and tangent of theta is less than 0 and we have to find sine of theta. First we know that by definition cosine of angle theta is x over r and we know that r is always positive and because we are given that the value of cosine is negative 3 over 5, then x must be negative 3 and r must be positive 5. So again I will write below that x is negative 3 and r is positive 5. Next we need to determine in what quadrant theta lies. Above we see that cosine and tangent are both negative and this happens in quadrant 2. We need to find sine of theta and in quadrant 2 sine will be positive. Now we know that by definition sine of theta is y divided by r and now to find sine we need to find y and for this we will use the Pythagorean theorem. Recall that r represents the hypotenuse of the triangle and y equals square root of r squared minus x squared. If we replace we will get the square root of 5 squared minus negative 3 squared. Then we will have square root of 25 minus 9 which makes square root of 16 and this equals 4. So we just found the value of y and this value is 4. And this has to be positive because in quadrant 2 sine is positive. Now let's find sine of theta. So sine of theta by definition is y over r and now we'll replace y with 4 and r with 5. So here we have the value of sine of theta and this value is 4 over 5. I hope you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, leave a comment and thank you for watching.